Hello, my friends. I wanted to do this video. I don't know how I may go, but um, I do want it. I do want to come on here to kind of talk, and I guess this is my way. Some people they do journaling. Some people they do you know, vlogging, some people, they meditate or whatever. And I found for myself that doing these videos are a blessing to me. And so, um, I wanted to I don't know. I just have a bunch of random stuff going on. Not really wanting to say too, too much. But then at the same time, it's like it is what it is. is and it's going to be out there. And so ain't no sense in me trying to be secretive or anything like that. Um, I wanted to uh, talk about emotions, hurts, pains, you know, life in general. Um, and I've, I've alluded to this numerous times on my, um, on my YouTube page and I don't know, it just seems to always come up and maybe this is something that I need to probably really focus on. Um, for many years, I know that a lot of people that I've come in contact with, especially those that have witnessed my journey in life, they've always told me, you need to write a book all the stuff you've been through in these 40 years, you need to write a book because it will be the bestseller. And, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, I don't want to write. First of all, I don't know the first thing about writing. I don't know how to go through the process. But sometimes when we step out on faith and we believe that God will carry us along the way. He will lead and guide us and he will bring people in our path to kind of help us. And I have someone that um, I friended on Facebook through ministry and she wrote a book and very successful. She's linked up with a very prominent, um, successful, anointed man of God and his wife. And she was like, if it's in you, you know, I'll help you through the process and all this other stuff. That's nobody but God. You know what I mean? And so sometimes we have the thing in our mind where we are like, I'm not like this person or I'm not like that person. And God, he just wants us to step out on faith, believing that he will you know, do the rest. We, he just waiting on us to move. We waiting on him to move and he didn't given us so many signs and opportunities to where we're missing it. And, um, I'm not going to say that I'm going to write a book, but I'm going to say that given this opportunity now, you know, I'm at a, I'm at a great place in my life. Now, if you know my story and you know what I'm going through, it almost seems like I'm contradicting myself. But the sky is the limit. Right now, I don't have nothing holding me back or keeping me from doing what it is that God wants me to do. Now, let me tell you this much. A month ago, I lost my job. A month ago. I was um, employed and had no intentions of quitting or being fired or anything like that, but I lost my job. On top of that, I lost my housing. Um, I am a on-site property manager, or I was, and so that the housing came with the job, and so when you lose your job, you basically lose your housing. So with that being said, I don't have the income that I had when I was working. So I had savings, but, you know, that savings get depleted really quick when that's all that you have. And then you have bills to pay. Um, I applied for unemployment. They did not contest it. And I think I've talked about this before, but I'm not going to go into too much with the job itself because it's some stuff that's going on on the background that I can't disclose as of yet. But the thing of it is, is that... I'm excited in my spirit, but 
I fight depression and I fight the little devil that's on this shoulder whispering in this ear telling me that I won't be able to make it. I won't survive. Things are going to crumble. Things are not going to go according to plan. I'm going to be on the street. I'm going to be homeless. I'm going to lose everything. This is just beginning. I mean, it's those little things that the enemy will speak in your ear to kind of make you doubt your potentials in God or stunt you stunt your growth or prevent you from moving forward now on this side i hear the spirit the voice of the lord and a still small voice telling me that i got this that he has me that no weapon formed against me shall prosper that if i take one step he'll take two if i take two steps he'll take six if i go and i do exactly what he's telling me to do then i will be successful and so it's in this ear that i hear that i can make it it's in this ear that i can hear the voice of the lord telling me it's not over it's in this ear that I'm encouraged knowing that greater is on the inside. It's in this ear that I hear the voice of the Lord telling me that victory belongs to me. Victory is my purpose is here. It's in this ear that I hear the Lord telling me not to give up. It's in this ear, in this ear that I hear the Lord telling me vengeance is mine i shall recompense it's in this ear that i hear him so strongly in my spirit to where i know without a shadow of a doubt that i can't give up i have to get rid of the cobwebs i have to get rid of the chat i have to get rid of all the clutter that's in my head and silence my thoughts because sometimes when we're going through a major change in life, again, changes, transformation is not always easy. But when we're going through changes in our life, our spirit, our mind, it, 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 it speaks louder. It speaks louder than what God is trying to tell us. And, you know, um, I can honestly say that there's times where I have been up literally for 24 hours, can't sleep because the voices, not the voices, the noise, the, the thoughts, the stress, the worry, the doubts, all that stuff is going on in my head and it's keeping me up at night and it's louder than the voice of the Lord. And I have to sit here and I have to make sure that I calm the, the, that noise and a lot of times that's what's stopping us is the noise that's in our head the noise that's in our head and and i have to constantly speak to that devil and tell him to get thee behind me flee i have to tell the enemy that and i also have to let it be known that i am a king's kid i am a child of god and i will overcome whatever it is that the enemy tries to throw my way why because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world i am the head and not the tail i shall be the lender and not the borrower sometimes we have to literally encourage ourselves in order to to make it just another day in order just to make it another hour in order to make it another month i mean we have to encourage ourselves and sometimes it seems like the weight of the world is on our shoulders and everybody that we thought would have our back kind of you know took a step back but he is more for us than the people that we thought was for us. All we have to do is trust and depend and rely on him. And sometimes I have to cry myself to sleep or just sit there later in my bed. And I literally have to force myself out out of bed some days because there's days where I do not feel like moving. I do not feel like getting up. I do not feel like doing anything. But I know that that is the trick of the enemy to keep me stuck in that place of complacency. I know it's the trick of the enemy that's trying to get me to fall into that deep, dark hole, that pit. But one thing about God is that God, he gives us a warning. He brings things to our remembrance. He allows us to recognize the trick of the enemy. And because I know him without a shadow of doubt in my heart, and I also know the attacks of the enemy, I have to shake myself.
And so there's times where I might get out into my car and I'm literally driving around because it's like I have to get out of this funk. I have to allow my mind to 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 see things, to hear things, to be surrounded by things that are positive because if you stay in those four walls and if you stay in that dark room and if you stay under those covers, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. But again, this voice that's in my ear telling me to push, telling me that I can make it, telling me that he has my back, telling me, telling me without a shadow of a doubt that this is going to work out for my good. Romans 8, 28, all things will work out for our good. Sometimes we have to remind ourselves of the prophecies that the men and women of God has spoke over our lives. And sometimes we have to remind ourselves that this prophecy, this promise is still a promise and it still has a post. It's not going to die. The only reason why a prophecy does not come forth is because we stop doing what we're supposed to be doing. Faith without works is dead. You have to make something happen by pushing yourself and putting yourself out there. Or else, yes, it's going to die. Or else, yes, it's not going to come into fruition. Yes, it's not going to manifest because it's something that we're not doing. So if God is telling me I will have that business and he sent a man or woman of God for me to have that business and I sit at home in the bed 24-7, guess what? I'm not going to have that business because I'm not out there doing the footwork. If God is going to, if God, if God tells me I'm going to, you know, have that house, the house is not going to come to me in my homeless state. I have to go outside and I have to put in applications. I have to search. I have to speak to people. I have to be in position to receive what it is that God has for me. I'm speaking to myself whether anybody else listens or not. It's up to you to do the footwork in order for that prophecy to come forth. If God promised you a job by next week, guess what? You got to go out there and you got to put in applications. You got to polish up your resume. You got to go on interviews. You got to apply. You got to knock on some doors. You got to do that. And watch the door that God has for you open. It's not going to open for you while you're at home in the bed, in the dark, under the covers, crying with your do-rag on. I'm talking to myself, but I know I'm talking to somebody out there. You got to do the work. You got to do the work. And so with all that being said, a lot of stuff has come up against me and it's been such a heavy transition because again, this all happened in August right during the time that I was fasting and praying. I was literally fasting and praying, literally. And I was fasting and praying even before all this stuff happened and I knew something was up and I will have to do another video on that to where I was seeing demonic forces you know, and I even told my daughter, I was like, something is up. I'm feeling in my spirit, something is up. We need to leave. And I literally said that before all of this stuff happened. God deals with me in dreams and visions. And so he's not going to have his children go unaware. I'm going to tell you this much that, excuse me, even all the stuff that has gone on in my life, and even up until this past month and coming into September, I've read so many things on the Internet and listened to so many YouTube videos about transition, about restoration, about birthing, about something new. Something is on the horizon. Change is coming. Transition. The whole nine yards. And even with the new year, Rosh Hashanah, 5779. Um, 2019, the Jewish calendar is a new year. And in the spiritual realm, there's changes. And there's a birthing that's going on. And it's funny because September is the ninth month. The ninth month in the natural sense for a woman is delivery, is preparation of childbirth. There's something new on the horizon, and the thing of it is, is that for me in August, and even prior months of that, I was going through Braxton Hicks. 
those little light contractions that we feel. It's not contractions itself, but they're light contractions that, that people feel when, you know, the baby is, you know, kind of getting restless or whatever the case may be. But then in the eighth month, up until the ninth month, I was dealing with severe contractions, not even realizing that I was on a breakthrough of a birthing. I'm talking to myself and eventually I'm going to have to look at this video again just to encourage myself. So, I'm in the season of birthing. I'm in the season of change. I'm in a season of restoration and transition and transformation. Anytime that you go through delivery, anytime you're near delivery or childbirth, the woman knows that there's a change that's going on in her body, in her mind, to where she starts nesting, to where she gets uncomfortable, to where the baby is getting too big and it's just being confined in this small space now. And you can't move. But you know that that after this is all over with, you're going to be able to hold your blessing in your arms. The pain is there. The, the agony is there. The, 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 the heart, heartburn is there. The, the, the contractions is there. The swelling is there. The increase of weight is there. Everything is there. But you know that there's a blessing coming. And the blessing that you visually see and feel is is like you know that it's coming but in the spiritual realm we don't have anything that we see other than what we go by in the spirit so i know that in the ninth month that these contractions that have came up on me and all these things that have happened in my life i know that i'm on a break verge of a breakthrough and those of you that are listening to this video understand that you too are on the verge of a breakthrough as well hold on Hold on, your change is coming. God is not going to leave you nor forsake you. Just continue to stay the course. Continue to do what it is that you know how to do and what to do. Don't lose hope. Remain faithful. Get into your word. Get into the, the your prayer closet. Start fasting. Surround yourself with the things of God because I'm telling you. And I'm talking to myself. I don't know how many times I had to say this, but I'm talking to myself and I just want to cry and scream right now. But if you hold on to God's unchanging hand, I promise you he will bring you out of this. He will bring you out of this. And you're going to look back a month, five years, ten years from now and say, God, that was nothing. That was nothing. You brought me out of this. And look at the blessings of the Lord that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. God will not allow sorrow to befall the children of God that goes according to his plan. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. That's Bible right there. This right here, the tears, the pain. The anxiety, the doubt, the fear, the worry, or whatever that I'm feeling, that's not of God, that's of the enemy. And that's fleshly. We got to get out of flesh. We got to get out of our feelings. That's what it is. I'm in my feelings. And my eyes are so focused on the problem that I can't even see what God is doing. But we need to focus our eyes off the problem and onto God. And understand that God is going to bring us out. Look unto to the hills from which cometh our help. Our help cometh from the Lord. Not from our problem. And I posted on my Facebook page. I said my prayer is Jesus be bigger than whatever it is. Jesus be more relevant and bigger and more powerful than, than this problem that I have. This eviction that I have. This employer that I have. This car that I have. Lord be more powerful than that. And I'm going to hurry up and get off the phone. I have rubber hands right here in my teeth. And they, they, they're they breaking now because I'm talking. And, and they're just all over the place. But know that God has you. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans of good and not of evil, plans to give you an expected end. I didn't know what I was going to come on here to do or say. I didn't know. But God knew. And he knew what I needed to hear. 
and is in my spirit. And today, today, I'm encouraged. Right now, I'm encouraged. Be blessed, you all.